Hello, Ian M. Banks fans, and welcome back to the Culture Books Podcast. My name is John. I'm joined by... Sheridan! And we are talking use of weapons. Um, we have done chapter one, so that was O-N-E, and now we're doing the next chapter, which is X-I-I-I, or 13. But that's because this book has a very unusual chapter structure. Um, so, Sheridan. Yes. What are we going to do now? You are going to recap what's happened in the book so far in 30 seconds. Got your little timer ready? Got my timer ready. Count me in. Three, two, one. So the culture is a bunch of uh, really smart uh, machines that keep some human pets. And um, one of their pets, Dizzy A. Smar, was trying to bring peace to a um, system in the galaxy and got told, no, stop that. Uh, we need you to go and get your old mate, um, Zakalwi, and uh, make some more peace somewhere bigger. Um, and that's pretty much everything that's happened. Cool. Right. Okay. And now you're going to try and sum up chapter XIII. Yes. Mm-hmm. AKA 13. Quite an inauspicious number to start, really, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Okay. Your time starts in three, two, one. Zakawi so breaks into a random guy's thing place to kill him for the culture, but doesn't because he's gone freelance and that's it. The, cul- <laughs> the culture is inventing some sort of de-aging thing. Um, this guy like promised to do some stuff to get the de-aging and he didn't and the culture is really mad, but the culture doesn't want to kill him. They just want to like put him in like a prison, but like not a very like harsh prison or a very comfortable one. That was, that was appalling. <laughs> I told you it would be. Um, well, I think it's harder how, when they How do you live with yourself? I think it's harder. <laughs> I think it's harder to summarize when it's shorter. <laughs> Right. Because <laughs> I, I summarised it too much. Um, let's, I don't know. <laughs> you didn't sum, you got everything wrong. What do you mean? <laughs> so Cowboy's not with the culture anymore. Yeah, but he went, th- he what goes there because. This guy screwed over the culture and so Cowboy's bringing his own justice. Yeah, but he knows about the guy because of the culture. Yeah. Because he says, I've gone freelance. So yeah. he, the culture obviously hired him. Yeah. And then he was like, nah, I don't want to, like, that's too good what they're letting this guy get away with. Yep. What? See, I wasn't wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get, let's get into it, shall we? Okay. You're like, this is not going to go well. <laughs> uh, okay, so it starts with the words, wake up, he woke up. Um, and I did like how it then went into nobody talked to him in that tone, not anymore. And at this moment, you don't know who is being told to wake up. And I was like, is that Zakawi? Why is he being such a, a narky toff? Mm. Um, but then it turned out it's the ethnarch. The ethnarch. Now, what does the word ethnarch mean to you? Oh, I don't, no idea. I'd not thought of it. It is actually not a made-up word. It's a real word. Wow, okay. Um, and um, there has, um, in our lifetimes, actually been an ethnarch uh, in our world. Um, Archbishop Macarius of Cyprus was um, a self-styled ethnarch. I feel like these are um, all words. I don't know what they mean either. Mm. Um, <laughs> what, Archbishop Macarius? Was that someone in the Catholic Church? Well, no, he's a Greek Anglican. Orthodox. Oh, right, okay. Uh, I did say from Cyprus. Anyway. I'm very <laughs> loose on what religions are in what countries. Uh, okay. Um, anyway, it basically means a leader of an ethnic group that is subnational. So um, it's a bit like um, below a king. Right. Mm. Well, Google says it's the ruler of a nation or people. Mm-hmm. So it's a ruler. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway. So that's what an ethno. Is. I mean, it was pretty clear he was a ruler because that was one reason why the culture wanted to get rid of him because they don't like hierarchies. You think? It says it in the chapter. But if he hadn't, if it actually stopped murdering all the people, they probably would have been okay with him. Possibly, yes. It's it's the murdering they've got a problem with rather than being an ethnarch. The murdering was definitely the major issue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad the murdering was the major issue. And I do like how as this, so it starts, the man's asleep being woken up and he's not very happy about being woken up and how he's been woken up. 
Um, and there's an intruder um, in a chair beyond the end of the bed. Okay. Uh, and, but then we start getting a sense of just how horrible this man is. The surgeons had given him new eyes five years ago. Um, and you're there's, even in that, there's a little bit, mm, where did those eyes come from? Well, he's got a lot of body parts. Yeah, he, do, he does. But but even in this little, yeah, it's it's a creeping sense of horror getting worse and worse. And as he's it goes clearly on. really old because mm. he lived with glasses for sixty years. Yes. Yeah, and then he found some dissidents to steal eyes from. Yeah. Um, and then we're introduced to the the view of Zakalway from the ethnarch's eyes. Um, and he introduced the word ethnarch. You know, good evening, ethnarch. Um, the voice of someone much older, old enough to make the ethnarch feel suddenly young in comparison. Um, now it's funny because it's this, this description of Zakawi being in all these, um, multicolored clothes, uh, baggy clothes, um, as, as is our want, the, um, cover up for this episode was generated by, by the mid journey AI. And once you told it that you wanted something multicolored, Everything in the room got multicolor. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't look like a um, an ethnarch's um, room at all. But Zakawi looks kind of cool in it, so I've kept it. So where do you um, think he got the clothes from? Because he's in a pretty kick-ass outfit at the end, under those clothes. Yeah, like, you know, I, I assume he was just wearing his um, culture rig that he had carried with him. From, I was wondering if he like stole it from someone in the building that he like killed. I don't or think put any, to sleep. I don't know if anyone in the ethnarch's um, security detail had this kind of clothes. I mean, the mm. whole point is it looks really alien to the ethnarch. I think true. Is, I think this is just culty culture party um, clothes that he's wearing. Um, but I do like how it's, is it is he some sort of jester in this outfit? Um, it's one of the things I'd really like to see how a movie would approach mm. that. Um, sure. And then here we go. The, the next line. Uh, he smiled, thinly pleased with himself. His heart. The heart of an athletic young anarchist woman up until 11 years ago was beating quickly, but not worryingly so. Um, so that, that's, that's the real, ooh, this guy is really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. So maybe these dissidents are just really horrible. Do you think they are? I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then to really drive the point home, there was a danger that he would rupture his eardrums, he thought, swallowing, but he would always take a new, but he could always take a new pair from a healthy dissident. Um, now all this is, is setting a scene. The ethnarch thinks he's got ways and means to get out of this situation. And, um, and then Zakawi keeps closing them off. I mean, there's a lot of ways and means. Yeah. He's well, got hidden guns and mm-hmm. people listening to him. I think actually what made him, when you realize he's really evil is when it's like, he's got, he's being recorded, but he can turn it off sometimes just for things, you know, he wants for himself. Yeah. And you're like, what horrible things is he doing in there? Well, I mean, there is the bit later in the chapter where he tries to bribe Zakawe saying, oh, I know some really nasty stuff that I don't think anyone's thought of before yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then we get his name, Ethnat Kirian, um, which, again, it's a very Greek-sounding name. So I, I think the reference to um, Archbishop Makarios and his activities running Cyprus is is strong here. Um, I really don't know enough about Macarius to pass much more judgment than that, though. Are there any other highlights so far for you? And then we get into Zakawi's storytelling. I mean, obviously, he thinks people are going to come and kill him. Kill Zakawi? No, the eth- ethnarch. Oh, you mean that he's w- worried about his security? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's got these elaborate countermeasures. And, yeah. Uh, now, here's a line that I love for this book where we've already noted that we have multiple storylines running. Actually, there are two stories, but you know most of one of them. I'll tell them at the same time. See if you can tell which is which, which is a oh, reference yeah, to the structure of, of this whole book. So what What do you think the other story, the, the, the culture was the other story? What was the other story? Well, the, the, the first story is the one that started with Dizio, and this mm. this is the, the other story of the book as a whole because it's got the different chapter naming convention. No, but when he tells the story to... To this story? Yeah. No, no, that's not directly referential to the book, but this this one line is referential to Yes, both. yes, sorry. I, yeah. I moved past it too mm-hmm. quickly. Okay. Um, but what two stories do you think are in his story? Oh, um, there's, the, there's the ethnarch story um, of uh, taking the life aging treatments, uh, life extension treatments from the culture. Um, but not delivering on what he's promised. And then there's the story of all these poor people who've um, done what they were told and been murdered anyway. 
But he knows both of those stories really well. Uh, well, he doesn't know that he's about to be murdered by Zakawi. True. <laughs> Which is the thing you kind of missed out of your summary. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. No, I said he went there to kill him. No, you said... Uh, it's fine. We'll, we'll, everyone can hear the tape on their own. Uh, <laughs> and you got this rising sense of dread where the you know, it's like, oh, where are my guards? When, when are they coming? <laughs> I usually put dot points down for my summary, but it was such mm. a short chapter I didn't think I needed it, and uh, I've really proved that I have. That you might have needed it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to read from when... Um, now, I've started using Zakawi's name. He does name himself later in the chapter, um, but uh, he hasn't. He's just the intruder at this point. Once upon a time, over the gravity well and far away, there was a magical land where they had no kings, no laws, no money and no property, but where everybody lived like a prince, was well, very well behaved and lacked for nothing. And these people lived in peace, but they were bored because paradise can get that way after a time. And so they started to carry out missions of good works, charitable visits upon the less well off, you might say. And they always tried to bring with them the thing they saw as the most precious gift of all, knowledge, information. And as wide a spread of that information as possible. Because these people were strange in that they despised rank and hated kings and all things hierarchic, even ethnarchs. So I told you. <sighs> yeah. Um, but that's not why. It's not being an ethnarch isn't why he's here to kill him. Yes, I accept I was mistaken on sure. that. Um... Yes, and then we get a little reference to the Adiran War. There are a few references to the Adiran War in this, which I'm just going to throw out for all the people who still claim that there's no need to read the culture books in any particular order. The more we get through these books, the more I realise that you're quite wedded to this idea that they're in a particular order. Well, just there are things that happen before that do get referenced. But if you read this now and then you read the first book... You wouldn't even remember that there were these lines that were referencing the Adiran War. It would be lost on you. Oh, it would definitely be lost on me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like a, a nerd burger like yourself, I think you'd take it up right quite... I just don't... Th- I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't register with me if I hadn't read um, Consider Flavors before now. Okay. Hmm. Um, and then this line, you might call them soft because they're reluctant to kill and they might agree with you, but they're soft the way the ocean is soft. And, well, ask any sea captain how harmless and puny the ocean can be. I like that bit. Mm-hmm. What do you like about it? Well, because there is, I mean, the culture has this underlying morality, right? Like, Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you've been kind of down on the culture in the past. I have, yeah. But you're getting to know them better now. I still think they're a bit messed up. Okay, in what way? Well, they just don't seem to suffer a lot. And I just... Hang on, that's the opposite of being messed up. Well, I... I just don't think they have a full, like, human experience because well, yeah, their, no, like, lives are so amazing. It's all about the computers, though, isn't it? But, uh, that, look, <laughs> I don't, I'm not as down on them as I was in the mm-hmm. first book. I do like the idea of saying, you know, here are people who um, are forgiving and do not mistake that for weakness. Because, for example, I can be very forgiving, but... Um, but when they're, like, saying that this guy can just go and live in, like, you know, not shitty conditions and not, like, really opulent conditions. Yeah. Still seems like it's pretty nice. Yep. And that's forgiveness. But to me, forgiveness has to involve some form of... No, it's not... Okay, sorry, go on. Like, you have to have, like, penance. But the culture's point that Zakawi is making for them here, so there's a touch of the straw men to it, uh, isn't that the culture's saying they forgive you. The culture is saying, we are not going to lower ourselves to your moral plateau. We are going to take away from you the capacity to do harm. And how you live out your life is up to you, but you won't be allowed to harm anyone again. Yeah, but you just said forgiveness. Sure, but that, I wasn't using it in this particular okay. sense. Um, and I do like that idea of saying... Well, they just don't like punishment. They don't like what punishment does to them. It's not They're not worried about what punishment does to the other people. Yes. Yeah. It's like when a parent whacks a child, uh, it does bad things to the parent as well as doing bad things to the child. And they're saying, we don't want to do the bad things to ourselves. 
Yeah, and see, then they just live in this, like, la, la, la. Yeah. Why not? They're just too perfect. There's something wrong with them. <laughs> this anti-aging stuff, too, that does not sound like it's going to go to a good place. Why do you say that? Well, why would they give all these different cultures mm-hmm. who are, like, quite evil the ability not to age? Well, in this that case... That sounds like it would be rife for corruption. In this case, they're saying to the ethnarch, how about you stop doing the genocides and we'll let you live longer? And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then the culture comes back and says, did you stop doing the genocides? Hmm, we've got a problem now. Yeah, but their morality is a bit messed up because they're like, oh, okay, well, the genocide's too bad, but, you know, living in this, like, opulent environment where you're obviously, like, doing, like, messed up stuff in the bedroom to rant, like, women mm. and being, like, a bit of an evil dictator. Yeah, but They're kind of okay with that? Well, the question is how much intervention um, is good or bad, and it's a very fine line um, in terms of where you, uh, where you go with your interventionism. Because if the culture just, you know, eliminates the um, hierarchy of the society, it's like, you know, who's going to um, organise the garbage collection? Well, they should come in and sort it out. Well, sort out everything. Yeah. And infantilise and remove choice from the people on this um, planet. It just seems a bit messed up. Well, the, the, yeah, this is, this is actually the heart of all these books, is trying to examine where you make the choices and where you make the decisions and also saying even culture minds don't get this right all the time. But then asking the question of is interventionism versus non-interventionism uh, the way to go. And All we right, will, it's a big question. It's a big we, question. We will explore this at some length over a great number of books. <laughs> so, the culture isn't stopped. Um, sorry, isn't soft. And then he comes to, um, you promised to stop the killings in Uricam, remember? Um, and the, <laughs> I love this. Oh, I may have said I review our segregation and resettlement policy in the no, I mean the killings, the death trains. Remember the trains where the exhaust comes out the rear carriage eventually. Um, you know, which is obviously a reference to how the Nazis used um, carbon monoxide poisoning and trucks yeah. in, as part of their death camps. Um, I would note here I had a really interesting conversation in my late 20s with a um, the editor of Australian Jewish News, a guy called Bernie Friedman. And he had an office um, just down the hallway from where I worked. And I'd, there was a prosecution going on of some, you know, 90-year-old. Um, Nazi. Uh, yeah, Nazi. And, and, I, and I went and asked him, I said, Benny, what's, what's, what's the point of these prosecutions of, of men this old? And he stayed calm because he was a very wise old man. And, and he said, John, the issue is that their victims didn't get the chance to get as old as they are. And there are so many of them, and you can't just let it go, ever. And I thought that was a pretty reasonable answer. Um, he schooled you, you young whippersnapper. Yeah, well, you know, I, I went and asked the question, and he was nice enough to give me an, a calm answer. Um, yeah, and this is kind of the point that Zakawi is getting to here, saying I, I'm departing from the culture on this. Um, they think you should uh, be allowed to live out your life. Um, and I'm saying no. I mean, the way he does it's pretty cool. Okay. What, 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 what regard? Well, when he goes, it must be rather awful thinking you're about to die. And he's like, not the most pleasant experience. It's such a relief, I imagine. And he's like, a bit like being rounded up in a village and thinking you're going to be shot. And then being told your fate is nothing worse than resettlement. And then resettlement is by train, by train which contains your family, your street, your village, and all of them are dead. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty, like, cool because then he's, like, realises, oh, you're actually going to kill me. You're not with the culture anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that bit is very cool. I did, like, um, just just before that bit where the Kyriarch's saying, I can give you things, and he says... Job satisfaction. That's all you can give me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, there's a reason why um, Zakawe o- occupies a space in the mind of everyone who's read these books. 
Um, and it's partly having great lines like that. Um, so, a question. Mm-hmm. Um, so, he refers, Sakawa refers to magic mm. from the culture. Mm-hmm. So, he says, um, they're not nice, they're nice people, but they disappear bad people. Mm. And then he gestures to his own colourfully model co- clothes mm. um, and says, you know, I'm dressed casually. And, of course, thanks to the magic, they never have any problems getting into even the most heavily guarded palaces. Mm-hmm. So what's the magic? Uh, really advanced technology. Like the little skin patches and all the little teeth robots. And who, who had a tooth? Someone had a gun in there. That was to sort of flavours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also just, you know, the, the mines offering... You know, the ability to take over any IT system anywhere. It's just a bit unusual that because they're such a sort of – the culture's pretty – it's not really very mystical. It's not a mystical culture. Uh, th- uh, this is an old line from um, – oh, who's the guy who wrote 2001? Um, anyway, that any um, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Mm. Okay, and that, that the point Zakar was making is – you are basically a ringworm to the um, culture. Uh, maybe not ringworm, that's actually a fungus. You're, you're a segmented worm to the culture and um, the stuff they do with technology is just magic to you because you are... can't understand it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the point there. I did think the, you know, I am called Sheradanin Zakawi. You are called dead. Now, that was a little cheesy. Did you... <laughs> 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 little cheesy you were called dead kapow he fired the gun uh, blood spattered over the headboard um and that's pretty much the end of the chapter except suddenly he's um wearing a ninja suit um, yeah see the ninja suit was cool as yeah that's the point i mean i guess the um ethnarch would have been much more terrified if he was sitting on the bed end of the bed with the ninja suit i think the, the the point is that Zakawi wasn't satisfied. Zakawi could have just killed him in his sleep. Yeah, but he wanted him to know why. Yeah. Yeah, but also he wanted the ethnarch to experience the terror he had inflicted on people. Yeah. Um, and, and to take him through the journey of, oh, maybe there's hope, maybe I'm going to be fine, um, and then to take that away from him. Yeah, he wanted to inflict some vigilante justice on him. Yeah. How do you think he did? I think he's cool. Like, I think mm. he's cool as. Okay. All right. Although, can I just ask? You pro- Well, you mm-hmm. can't. I can't really because you can't tell me. Okay, ask the question. But though. is this mm-hmm. before or after where he was in the first chapter? I don't think that's ever known. Because it sounds like the culture has really done a number on him. Mm-hmm. I okay. I'm going to offer head cannon here um, because I don't think it's um, definitively answered. This is significantly after the um, prologue chapter. But he's still young. No, he's still young looking. But remember that bit about his voice sounded so old that it made the ethnote feel young. Yeah. Yeah. But he still looks young. He still looks young. There's the culture magic. So you think that like his voice sounds old because he's been. Like had years of like weighted like crappy exp- life experience that have like he's been around the block yeah 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 okay okay um, I guess there are no ships disappointingly uh, in this episode uh, and two and I mean there's a girl who never wakes up why well, no, <laughs> she's look, maybe she who knows what happened to her last night she well, might be happy <laughs> I, I don't think she is I don't think she had a good night. But she might be happy he's dead. Oh, she might be happy he's dead. But, oh, well, she's going to have a lot of um, difficult questions to answer. Actually, yeah, she could be in a <laughs> lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but then everyone else has clearly been gassed or had something. Like, they must. They're going to know. I don't think it's going to I wonder be- if they're recording the sounds. I... Because the recording would have started when he said... Um, what is he, what's the line he says to... Look, I, that's an interesting question, because I think from Zakawi's point of view, leaving a recording for someone else to find 
would add to the luster and mystique and send a message into the hierarchy of the society. Um, you know, and, and also watching the, the, the humiliating journey of the ethnarch before he dies. So I think it's in Zakawa's interest to make sure that more people know about what he did. But I mean, why is he even there? Like, are these people, like, what's his relationship to these people? I assume he's known about it or been involved at some point in the dealings with this culture. Let's, let's not use the C word. This society. Um, and he knows that the ethnarch's gone back on his word and um, done more of the genocides. Um, and uh, he he feels uh, he can settle a score. Now, there is also a question, at what point is anyone actually free of the manipulation of the minds? And... Um, Maybe he thinks he's freelance, but maybe he's actually doing what they wound him up to do. Mm. <laughs> Which See, all... that's where they are messed up, because if they're doing that, mm. their morality is pretty questionable. The morality of a being that is so far above you that you are a bacteria to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that being's morality would be pretty questionable to you. I would, I would say impenetrable, but definitely questionable. Well, now you've just made me feel dumb. Compared to a culture you, mind. You know, you <laughs> that opening probably wasn't a good start for my self-esteem or my intellect. But but that, that's part of the fun of these books is is that the minds are so utterly beyond us. I mean, I don't know if you remember in Consider Phlebas, we had uh, about five pages trying to uh, make you understand how absolutely enormous the mind's brains are compared to ours. True. Uh, okay, I think we're done, and um, you've got a cutting plan that's going to let us do um, two chapters in the speed that's previously taken us one. I'm going to read, because I think that so technically... The stories are quite separate, so we can well, do... No, yeah. but I think they're the one chapter, but we will split them into two. Yeah. But um, I'm going to read them together, because okay. they're quite short. Yes, they are quite short. I promise you that. Okay, thanks, folks, so much for listening. We really do appreciate your ongoing company. Uh, we'll see if Sheridan's um, cunning plan to do these episodes faster comes to fruition. Uh, and um, we will be back in your ears soon. Thank you for listening. Thanks. <laughs>